Scientists just implanted fake memories into the brains of mice, which is fine because we do it to ourselves all the time. Hey guys, Anthony here for D News. Veronica Belmont's here with me. Oh, hi. And there was this really crazy study that happened. Uh, Reich and MIT researchers were able to put fake memories into the minds of mice. And when I saw this, I was like, Veronica Belmont just talked a lot about this. Veronica Belmont is a mouse who just had memories and Yes. Uh, no, we actually just did a fact or fictional show um, about the Matrix, and we had a neuroscientist on to discuss the possibility of downloading information into your brain and if that would work. And long story short, no, no. not really, not so much. Well, this could be the first step to, the, to mm -hmm. that, you know, and I'm, and I'm hoping it is because I think that's awesome. Uh, and what happened is these researchers uh, previously tagged the brain cells of these mice with uh, this light sensitive protein. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was these cells that were around a very specific memory in the mouse's head. And then when they would activate light on those cells, the mouse would just experience that memory. Oh, wow. What? So they're like turning that memory on again? On and off like a switch. Hmm. So the deal here is now they can use those cells to change the memories of the mice. How do they do that? Oh, in a super humane way. You're going to love this. Okay, okay, good. <laughs> Researchers put mice into a box, right? Then they injected the mice and their memory of being in that box with those light sensitive cells, right? Then they put the mice into a second box and uh, they shocked the mice's feet. And at the same time they shocked the mice's feet, they flipped that switch on and made them remember happy times. So what do you think happened? Um, they started associating the shock with happy memories. Kind of, pretty yeah, much. <laughs> pretty much. This is what happened. And every time they went into their actual happy place, they had like, ah, get me oh, out of here. Scared. Yeah, yeah, instant association. So many different bits of the brain are involved in restructuring memory. I mean, you've got your, your premedial frontal cortex, which is like the part that does like dreams. You've got your hippocampus, which like pulls all of your sensory information together. And it's so easy to fool. We have false memories all of the time. Actually, 249 Dutch soldiers were interviewed about their deployment um, for a PTSD study. And at okay. the end of the interview, researchers made up an event. They just totally made up an event. They were like, how about that, you know, that missile attack that happened on your base uh, the last week you were there? Yeah. And so, Eight soldiers remembered that event. Just right there in the interview. They were like, oh yeah, that yeah, that was really bad. It was bad times. That yeah. was bad times. <laughs> but during a follow-up interview, like seven months later, 50 more of them reported that same event. Apparently the ones who had lower IQs were more likely to falsely remember this missile attack than those who had a, a higher IQ. So it's, it's, it's kind of interesting hmm. because you're basically just planting that little seed and then you build up a whole bunch of memories associated with that false memory. The opposite can actually happen. There was another study, I feel like our brains are just filled with lots of memories of studies, yeah. um, where people were shown, they were, they were at a desk, but they were told to focus on certain things that were happening. Yeah. And in the meantime, this guy in a gorilla costume like comes up in the background and is walking around. Mm -hmm. And then the participants later, a lot of them were so focused on the things they were told to be focused on that they completely missed the gorilla in the room. You can selectively not remember certain things because your mind is elsewhere. That's why people give false accounts during like, you know, crimes. And this like is the that. thing. There is false memory syndrome in therapy where asking somebody to try to call up something traumatic that happened mm -hmm. will make them create something false that happened to them. And so they are creating these horrible things that happened to them in their childhood or whatever, but they're oh, all, geez. they're not real, but you're just, it's like forcing a confession out of somebody. It's the mm -hmm. same part of the brain. It's like, okay, okay, I remember, stop asking me. That explains a lot about my childhood. Yeah. And what's great about this Riken study, this, this mouse study is, we haven't been able to see what causes false memories in humans. It all just mm -hmm. looks like memories being built. Uh, but because mice, have such similar brains to ours. If we're able to isolate this cause of false memory, we can reverse engineer it and maybe get rid of this entirely. Yeah, this just is... wipe us like eternal sunshine of the spotless mind. That's too far in the other direction, Veronica Belmont. <laughs> that is too far. But this is great. I've, we've been knee deep in so much memory stuff lately. I'm like fascinated by this. Uh, we're gonna be on Fact or Fictional, actually. Yes, I'm bringing Anthony on to talk more about memories. Uh, we are going to actually be talking about films like Memento and Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind to see you know, how memory works in film. Yep, both of those actually pretty, pretty able to happen. Pretty All realistic, right. yeah. So we'll have to see. Check that video out. It's uh, over at youtube.com slash techfeed, and be sure to subscribe here for more D News.